All right, let's go. E4, C6, D4, D5. We've got the Karo Khan Ugh. against M. Lee. We're going to go for it. We're going to play bishop to f5. Very happy to see knight f3. It avoids all those g4 type of crazy variations and stuff. So this is the kind of game we're going to get. Very nice, relaxing game. Hopefully with some nice developing moves. And not too much craziness. That's the kind of Karakhan we like to play. We're playing a 10-minute game with 5-second increment. And... So... We... Want to get our pieces out. The way I want to develop this situation is... H6, Bishop H7, Knight E7, Knight F5... Bishop E7, Knight D7, castles... Is the way that we want to go. So let's start with Knight D7 first. Next move will be probably h6. And if he plays bishop g5 here, I am wondering if I'm going to just play f6 or am I going to play bishop e7. I don't want to give up my good bishop really that easily. You know, the e7, the f8 bishop is the my better bishop of the two. So, well, here I think it's kind of been decided for us. We're going to play h6 first. So I believe now 97. And I'm wondering if my knight needs to go on g6 or f5. I think f5 makes the most sense because I want to play knight h4 and trade those knights off. But we know for sure bishop h7 is coming next, so let's go ahead and play that. Now with his bishop on e3, maybe I'll play um, knight f6. Or, sorry, knight f5 for sure. So he wants to really immediately put... Um, a stop to any kind of c5 business it seems like let's go ahead and get the knight here first we're gonna definitely play c5 so my next move if he doesn't do anything say he plays knight d2 i'll take on e3 and then i'll play c5 i don't want him to dominate me on the queen side so he definitely goes for what we uh, expected but the thing is, I'm still not very developed yet, so I need to keep that in mind, that opening up the F-file may potentially be an issue for him, or for, for me, actually, at some point. I think C5 right away might make some sense, honestly. Before he gets in the move B4. I'll play it. The only thing to worry about here is a quick c4 from him from him from from uh from white breaking open the center before my king has gotten a chance to castle. So I need to definitely keep that in mind. I think I'm going to trade on d4 just to make sure that the center stays closed. Let's do that. Okay. So now that that's taken care of, things are looking a little better. If I play bishop e7, there's definitely bishop uh, b5 coming. So maybe I need to play a6 first. Let's stop any kind of bishop b5 type of stuff. And then let's get going with our plan. Plan now looks like this. Bishop b7. Castles. 
So he doesn't want me to take on e3, not as if I was going to. I wasn't going to take that bishop. That's his bad bishop, and I have a great knight on um, f5. So why would I make that trade? I'm just going to get developed. If he wants to take the time to play bishop to b4 to try to trade the my good square bishop, uh, good better bishop of the two, then that's fine. My bishop on h7 actually is not bad anymore. It's on a great diagonal now. Yeah, so he wants to take some time to go through all this. Just to grab, excuse me, my dark square bishop. That's fine. I have no problem with that. I'll happily just castle. <clears throat> Let's play rook c8. Get the rook to a good square. So now he wants to go for the b7 pawn. We will not make it that easy for him, though. That's for sure. Uh, we can play a couple of things here. I think rook c7 might be one idea. Rook c7 makes some sense. Let's play it. Will he play queen a3 now to try to force the trade of bishops or something like that? I don't know. I'll always have to watch out for some type of move like g4, you know. Definitely don't want to get that knight on f5 trapped or anything like that. So that's always something that we got to keep in mind here. But I think overall, my position, I don't know, I'm feeling a little cramped. Like if that knight on was on c6, I would feel amazing in this position. But this knight being on uh, d7, it doesn't feel as good. So as a result of that, I'm going to reroute the knight. I think I'm going to play knight b8 here, honestly. And just get this guy rerouted. Let's do it. Let's get the knight to a great square. Oh, did I miss a tactic? No, 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 no. Good. I thought there was a knight takes d5 or something like that. Um... But it doesn't work. I can take the rook on c1 with check. Comes with the check. But I could have also just taken the knight too, I believe. So yeah, here, I mean, I made some room for my queen now on d7. Knight belongs on c6. And then the other rook will go on c8. Something like that. And here in a minute, I'm going to start trading pieces, you know. Interesting move. So bishop takes bishop. Mm. Let's just play this. All right. That makes some sense. But now d4 is hanging, I believe. He doesn't have time for knight c5, I think. 
because of d4. So my pieces are starting to coordinate now, you know? Like, d4 is going to be a perpetual weakness because he doesn't have the dark square bishop now to guard that thing. So he's going to have to keep a knight or a rook or something on that pawn all the time. So d4 is definitely going to be a pawn that we're going to go for as a point of attack here. Now, that move looks risky. I will definitely say that move looks risky to me. For example, after rook c8, um, there's going to be some tactics coming his way pretty soon with the queen and two rooks lined up like that. Oh, he could have played knight b6, I think, also even. So should I play knight b4 now and trade the... I don't know. Queen b4 is also an option here. The question is, do I want to trade queens with this guy? Probably not. But I believe knight b6 is going to happen next move, or here shortly. So, and, oh, he's going to play b4 also. Interesting. That's something to consider as well. Okay, let's play this. Let's try this. Ooh, interesting. That was a little unexpected. Now the question is, can I make knight takes d4 work in my favor? Can I make that work? Knight takes d4. If knight takes anywhere else... Uh-oh, knight takes d4. Wait, knight takes d4. Queen takes b4? Doesn't work because I can take on e2. Knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. Rook takes c5. <coughs> if queen takes b4, then I have rook takes c1 check, and I can win the queen. Knight takes d4. Queen takes d4. Rook takes c5. Rook takes c5. Queen takes c5. I'm protecting the knight. So, I believe I can just make this work. Okay, so he knew that was coming. So now this. So I'm up a pawn. And he can't take on b4. And if he takes on c5, I'm taking back with the queen. Or even the rook takes actually even works, I believe. So I think that was just a clean pawn that I, we just won. In that tactical uh, sequence. So that's definitely nice. Um, okay. All right. He wants to come back. That's fine. If I take on c1 check, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. Then I come back with knight c6. That's an idea. 
let us do that. Let's go ahead and trade. Start trading things off since we're up material. Uh oh, there's a problem. Takes takes knight c6. There's bishop takes a6. That is gonna be a problem. What about the move rook c5 here? He still can't take on b4 because of the check. Let's try that. Rook c5 is a nice move. I'm threatening to just play... Actually, what am I threatening here? I don't know what I'm threatening with that move. I don't think I'm threatening to take the a5 pawn because he has rook c8 check. I do need to move my bishop on h7, by the way. That thing is um, blocking my king's escape square, flight square on h h7. So I'm probably going to move that bishop to like f5 or e4 here shortly. Just to make some room for the king if there's any kind of back rank check. Because right now there's a back rank mate. That can happen any second. <clears throat> All right. Since he did that move, could I now play rook c2? And really attack everything. So now I'm going to try to win b2. I'm going to try to win a5. I'm going to maybe even go for e5. I'm going to double on the c5. C file, I mean. So I need to be careful here, though. I don't want to give him the c file. So let's not go pawn grabbing greedily. And let's go ahead and grab the c file first. I'll take the c file. And the next move, I probably might pawn grab because if rook c1, then I have rook c2. After rook takes b2, rook c1, rook c2. I come back and I grab the c file again. But I definitely need to move my bishop. I keep forgetting. I don't keep forgetting, but I need to do that before it's too late and I miss some sort of a tactic. With the bishop being on h7, there's always you know a chance for some crazy ridiculous tactic to, to take shape. So right now might be a good time to do that, actually. But I need to play faster. He might play knight d2 here and kick me off. So queen c3, I think, is going to come next. I'm definitely playing that move next. Because I'm hitting his queen and the a1 rook. So I'm going to... And he has to trade, really. If not, then he, I'm going to take on b3 as well. But I have a minute. Oh, Interesting. Let's get that move in. We're up a pawn... Why not trade down to an endgame where we are up upon? I think I could have taken on F3 and then... No, never mind. Just kidding. <clears throat> I thought I could take on E5, but I can't. <clears throat> So here, he doesn't have many options. I think he's going to have to trade queens with me now. And the moment he does, you know, I will have a pretty solid steady advantage. The knight on b4 is excellently placed. Rook on c3 is excellently placed, ready to um, 
take the B3 pawn. And the only thing I need to be concerned about is really the um, C file. But I think I can block that C file, though. All right. So let's just grab. Oh, 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 oh. I got to be careful. There's knight d2. Tricky business. But I think I'm okay after knight d2, honestly. I think I'm okay here. Gotta play here. Hmm. Takes. Uh, let's just take the bishop, actually. Take here. Let's take this outside pawn. Instead of the one on e5, because that one is going to queen on me if I don't take that one. He's obviously going to go after f7, maybe, or maybe come out. I don't know, actually, where he'll go. There's a couple of options he has. But either way, I've got an outside pass pawn that I'm going to queen here shortly. So this surely can't be too bad for me. Um, no, sir, you will not grab that. Can I take that one? He comes back this way. Let's just do this. So after this, my plan is pretty straightforward. I'm going to play... I'm just going to queen, you know, walk this guy over. I mean, even if he gets this, you know, f7 pawn, it doesn't really change the nature of this position too much. I mean, I'm still going to have an outside pass pawn. He wants to checkmate me. Interesting. Check here. Let's try to queen this guy. Why don't we just come back behind this one again? I have all types of tricks that I can try here. Again, he's trying to checkmate me. Let's come here this time. If he takes my pawn, then that's going to be a disaster for him. Let's now... Change things up a little bit. Uh-oh, now he's going to take that pawn. Uh-oh, I forgot about that. Oh, shoot. Dang it. Well, that makes things a lot harder now. <laughs> that makes things a lot harder now. Oh, gosh. Oh, I should have played king g6. This is not 
so easy anymore now. After that stupid move of letting him take that pawn, things got a lot rougher. Let's try to come at it from a different angle, perhaps. Try to queen this pawn, maybe? <clears throat> it's my only other pass pawn I have. I'm just buying time on the clock right now, actually, is all I'm doing. I'm trying to go after F4 also, by the way. And just hoping for some type of silly mistake, possibly, that he could make. Mm. What else can I do here? How can I make progress here? Can't take that pawn. Oh, that's losing. I win the rook now. And after that, it's just a very simple and easy win. Is it? Is it, though? Oh, gosh. I don't know if it is or not. That's the thing. I grabbed the opposition now. That's one good thing. I think I should be able to win this. I, I think. I think this is the way to make progress here. Although I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this should be winning. So I grab the opposition again. I don't think he can hide in the corner and get a stalemate or anything like that. Should be able to just win this outright. Check. Now I just grab this square. Oh, God. Wait. Okay, so I'm glad he resigned because I was kind of getting confused here for a second. So I thought maybe here and then here. That's stalemate. So after here, I have to play here. He plays here. This was a draw, I think. Holy crap, he just resigned a drawn game. here there's just no way oh my god <laughs> there is no way to make progress i think i think he just literally resigned a drawn position
wait. Wait a second, what's going on here? So, obviously this is a draw. We're not going to do that. So, king g3, king g1, king h3. Uh, if he plays king f2, then I play king h2. So, what if he tries this? King G1, oops, oh gosh, King G1, oh, and then G2, okay, never mind, so this was not a drawn position, now he has to get out of this, the pawn is going to queen, okay, wow, that was quite a game, let's look at this one, let us look at this one. So the opening started with, you know, the basic stuff, e4, c6, Karo Khan, d4, d5. So this is the advanced variation, advanced variation of the Karo Khan. For a while, I was actually playing the move c5 in this position, but lately I've come back to my original response against this that I used to play way, way back in the day, which is bishop f5. Which is the main line, I think. So knight f3, e6, and bishop e2. Again, white doesn't want to play a bishop d3 because white, white's light square bishop is the better bishop because his pawns are in the dark squares in the center. My light square bishop is my bad bishop, typically in the Karo Khan, because my pawns are all in the light squares. So the bishop has less mobility, basically, right? So knight e7. C3. And then... So C3 is interesting. I feel like... I don't know. C3 makes make, makes sense. Makes sense. So knight... Okay, so knight E7 is the recommendation from most GM games. But after knight E7... I wonder if you can just, just play that. Bishop G6. He takes. I don't know how I feel about this position personally. I like to keep that bishop. I don't want to give this bishop up that early. And yeah, I am not a big fan of this knight e7. Let's see what the engine says about this. Yeah, see, it doesn't really like knight e7 in this position at all. It's recommending c5, f6, etc. And I agree. I think giving up that bishop pair so easily and getting those doubled pawns and ultimately you know black's gonna end up castling on the king side anyway i'm just not a whole huge fan of that sort of style of play let's just say that so instead <clears throat> what do we have here h6 H6 is a recommended move by the engine. Let's see what it says after knight e7. Mm, it's okay. H6 is the fourth move. Uh, excuse me. And it is the second most popular move in the Grandmaster um, Master Games database. So H6, castle, now knight e7. So knight h4 now, of course, we come back with the bishop to h7. <laughs> Knight e3, bishop h7, a4. That was kind of surprising to me, actually. I didn't understand quite exactly what is the purpose of a4. Like, is he stopping me from trying to stop me from playing b5? Does he just want to play a5 and a6 to make some weaknesses on my queen side, maybe? I don't know. But either way, it didn't make any sense at all because I'm not playing b5. And even if he gets in a5 and a6, okay, so what? I play b6. That only helps me to play c5 in the near future. So I don't think this a4 moves makes any sense. You don't see it in the Grandmaster database. And the engine... Oh, wow. Engine actually does like this a4 as the second most popular choice. Second recommendation from Stockfish. Oh, wow. Now it's become the top choice move. Interesting. Interesting. 
Perhaps the idea of a4 is to stop the move b5, because after b5, maybe I can grab the c4 square or something like that. You know, b5, a5, b4, maybe one idea that I might go after here. And a4 kind of stops that, but it's kind of a strange looking move, if you ask me. So I think we're out of theory at this point here. I don't think we go back into theory in this game, so... Starting from A4, we're going to start looking using the engine. Okay, so the most natural move for me to continue developing my king side would be knight F5. So A5. And what happened? Um, okay, c5 came on the board. So knight f5 is definitely the right move here. Then he plays a5. Interesting, that's also a top choice move from the computer. This whole idea of the a-pawn, I've never really seen this before in the Karakon like this. This is really interesting. I have not seen this very often. Okay, so I played c5 right away just to quickly uh, strike at the center. But I don't know if it was premature. And maybe it was because now the comp computer's recommendation is to play c4 immediately. And that's the biggest fear that I had. Is if c4 comes, then the center is definitely opening up, and I'm still at least two moves from castling. I mean, well, one move, you know, bishop e7 castles. Uh, but, you know, once the center starts breaking up, and, and white is fully developed, and I'm not, it, it can definitely be problematic in some scenarios. So, from that perspective, um, c5 may have been a very risky proposition. I would imagine. Okay, so he plays this uh, queen a4. a nice move. I mean, he's threatening to play bishop b5, which is very, you know, which will be very annoying. Hmm. The engine prefers not to even care about this bishop b5. Knight e3, okay. He's supposed to play bishop e7, really. So if bishop e5 happens, then what? a6. Ah. Just trading everything off. And getting this position right here. That. Interesting. Yeah, here white has to be better. I mean, sorry, black has to be better. I've got the bishop pair. Perfect pawn structure. Uh, what does white have? <laughs> Two knights for the bishops. Horrible pawn structure, doubled pawns, doubles, doubled isolated pawns, and yeah, this is the dream position, I think. I would love to play this endgame against anybody. Um, so anyway, um, it's not what happened in the game. So we played, um, he played this, this, I took. The reason I took is, you know, I didn't want him to play c4. I wanted to get rid of that possibility right away. So that is what I, you know, why I played that. And 
And then A6 to stop any kind of B, uh, Bishop B5 business, but I think it's just too slow. I need to get my pieces out. Bishop D7. This was a very interesting maneuver, playing Bishop D2 and Bishop B4 just to trade off these bishops. That was really interesting. That's what he does. Obviously, I castle. Thank you for letting me get developed without causing any complications in the center. So knight c3. So rook c1 is preferred. Yeah, it makes sense. Open c file, why not grab it? Take control of c4. Uh, sorry, take control of c5 maybe. Could be one idea. So knight c3, I played rook c8. <clears throat> so now queen b3 and i am very happy that i found some of these interesting moves here so here his threat is to pay, you know take on e7 and pick up the b7 pawn which is i mean i guess kind of a threat at the end of the day it's not really truly a threat i guess because i can play rook b8 and take b2 but then I guess he's taking on a6, so maybe it is a threat. But anyway, I played rook b uh, c7, defending this guy. Knight b8 is recommended. That is a move that I actually played next move, I believe. Okay, now I'm very happy that I found this knight b8, because that is the best move here. Just to reroute the knight back to c6, which is a far better square for the knight and has a future. Then uh, d7. Because where is the knight going from d7? It's going to go to f8 and g6. And that's, you know, what is it really accomplishing from g6? The moment white plays g3, the knight doesn't have any scope there at all, right? It's, it can't go to f4, h4, anything like that. So it makes a lot more sense to put the knight on c6, where it attacks the bishop on b4, attacks the pawn on a5, keeps pressure on the pawn on d4, maybe even, cons cons you know, possibilities of knight takes e5 sacrifices which is what happened in the game i think uh, knight takes d4 happened actually but yeah it's definitely the best square for the knight is c6 so very happy that i found this knight b8 and it also makes room for my queen on d7 knight c6 So here already it was possible to um, take on d4. Hmm. Or play bishop g6 to make room for the king as well. So I didn't do either of these two things. I ended up just doubling the rooks, which I thought was a very natural thing to do here. But I believe the response to that should have been knight b6, which is why this rook c8 is not being recommended here. Yeah, knight b6 and I have to move my rook again. That makes sense. I guess after knight b6, there's no time for me to do any kind of discovered anything with my knight so say for example i play this yeah he's taking on c8 with that attack on my queen that's the problem here that is the main problem okay that makes sense why rook c8 doesn't make you know doesn't make sense here so i played this he missed this knight b6 he played queen uh back so now I am going to get the pawn for free. Oh, I should have taken on d4. That's, yeah, I missed that actually. Knight takes d4, again, knight takes d4, rook takes c1, rook takes c1, rook takes c1, queen takes c1. The knight takes d4, wins the piece. So he can't take back. So that means d4 is a free pawn here, basically. 
Man. Well, I missed that too. And instead, I played 9v4. After which, I am actually losing. Wow. G4. Forces a disconnection between my queen and two knights. The queen has too many responsibilities. It's overworked in this position. So it has to defend b4 knight. And now has to de defend the uh, h4 square for the knight to go to. Because knight on f5 doesn't have any other squares. So after g4, I would have just lost a piece, I think. Yeah. Rook c2. And I can't even take the queen because of rook takes c8 check. That's crazy. I just lose a piece, essentially. All right. Well, that's cool. That's cool. I missed that tactic completely. And he missed taking advantage of it as well with g4. This is something that we both need to work on is just spotting these uh, miscoordinated pieces, discoordinated pieces. So now I saw the tactic of knight takes d4. Which it does make sense, and it works. Um, queen takes, rook takes, queen back to d2. Now I took a pair of the rooks. But knight c2 was apparently better. So I didn't want to trade everything off on, because he would end up getting the C file at the end of all this, but I guess there was really nothing to worry about after Queen, maybe Knight C6, yeah. But I thought he had this move, Bishop takes A6 or something. So, oh, interesting. Hmm, interesting. That is, yeah, I didn't definitely didn't see that. I'm gonna take this pawn. Wow, nice. That's cool. You can also play that. This is a cool line too, where I'm up a piece, but he's got this pass pawn on a5. That's interesting. Well, um, yeah, this is cool tactics here. I didn't see all this. I just saw bishop takes a6, and I stopped calculating because I knew it was. I thought it was gonna lose a piece, really, uh, a pawn actually. But anyway, um, rook c5. It's not a bad move, though. I mean. Planning, is planning the plan is simple. It's just to double the major pieces on the C file. So then he makes his rook very passive now for some reason. So we got rook C two. Queen C seven. I have complete control of the C file. So now I make room for my king in the back rank by playing this bishop e4, which is the best move. So I'm again very happy to find that move. H3. And now I decide to go into an end game because I am up um, a pawn and I have nothing to worry about. So I play this queen f3, queen c3, I mean. Well, this makes things a lot easier, I think, for white now. 
in terms of defense. Okay, queen c3, we trade, mmm, wow, okay, all I had to do was just take the knight first, then take the pawn on b3, and I would be totally fine, but I missed that, I took this, and ran into this move, which I, I, I saw that, but I thought I was, you know, I, I didn't have a choice, but I totally missed that. We should take CF3 was there too. B2 takes. I take the bishop. Takes. D4 immediately. Wow. That's interesting. That sounds kind of risky, but I don't know. Maybe it just, it's very concretely calculated. But engine. So I played a more human like move going after this pawn. And I thought he did a really nice job of generating counterplay on this side of the board now. He actually caught me... <sighs> make this very, very difficult for me. I thought it was going to be a very easy win. I just queened the A-pawn. But he made it really hard by doing all this. So H5. F4. So I could have, yeah, I could have just taken the F4-pawn, I think. But he would have won my a6 pawn, though. I'd get those two pawns, but he would get my a6 pawn. But I think I would have been fine. Being up two pawns. I mean, I have so many pawns on the king side that I wouldn't... As long as my rook can tie down that a pawn, I should have been fine. But I played it super safe here. I played I this pawn. And he tried to go for this crazy checkmating idea on me. That's crazy. So rook a3 check followed by taking on g4 was an idea. A3 goes after it. I should have just, yeah, I went rook up a1. Here, check. And I went after this guy. Yeah, that f5 was definitely a mistake. I need to now go back and defend my pawn on a1, or sorry, a3. But f5 seems to also work to win. Sufficient enough. G1, king f3, k1, okay. And now it just seemed like it was kind of difficult to force the win now, but obviously it happened. Um, there was a way, which is basically to try to queen the d pawn. Oh, so I could have won the f pawn here actually by playing rook f1 check followed by rook takes f4. Mm, rook g4 now would have been it. So in this position, I made a pretty big mistake with this move, huh? c5 check, king f6, and now the game is almost even. I should have played king g6, interesting.
Okay, so king here, now a bunch of shuffling around for a long time. Again, rook g4 wins one of the two pawns. I missed, kept missing that over and over. It's a mistake because of rook b8. Uh, interesting. Rook b7. Yeah, that's makes that's okay. That makes sense. All I'm doing is just basically going behind the D pawn and just when pushing that through, I think is the idea here. But anyway, I just kept, you know, buying some time on the clock and sitting in the position for a little bit. Here. He's got some serious drawing chances after H5. All the pawns are getting traded off and it's 2 versus 1 and yeah, it's a drawn game at this point actually. Miracle that I won this one. Now rook c7 is recommended, but I play here, and then again it's a drawing, drawn position. So we're shuffling back and forth aimlessly, but really we're going hopping around from draws to losses to wins here in these positions. Start running this guy. Now here I knew he was make, going absolutely wrong. Trying to go for that pawn. Oh, king g3. I have some problems. He takes this and that's a major blunder. Check. And from here on, I think I played a perfect game. That's the game. Hopefully you got something out of it. And good luck in your chess adventures. Try out this Karakon opening. Main line with Bishop H5. Uh, sorry, Bishop F5. And let me know how it goes. Catch you in my next video.